Now ha let's have a look at some uh, basic examples with depreciation. Here, for tax purposes, you may deduct 20% per annum off the value of computer equipment on the straight line method from your profit. Okay, so that means when you buy computer equipment, you can't um, book it out as an expense when you're doing your um, accounting. It doesn't count as an expense. It's actually uh, equipment would be an asset. But that asset loses value over time. And according to them, it loses 20% per annum on the straight line method, which means that 20% you can deduct as, a de an, as an expense every year for tax purposes from your profit. Okay, so just with a little bit of background, don't worry about it. You don't need to know that for the exam, but just for understanding the background of this question. Okay, so for tax purposes, you may deduct 20% off of the value of computer equipment on the straight line method from your profit. After how many years will the book value of the equipment be zero? In other words, after how many years will your books your accounting actually show that you have no more value for your computer equipment. So we are working on depre with depreciation and the straight line method. In other words, the future value of my present value is 1 minus I N. And we want to know after how many years will my future value be 0. My present value is how much? We don't know if they don't tell us. We assume we don't need to know. Okay, 1 minus I is my interest, or in this case my depreciation, which is 20 over 100, and N is actually after how many years. That's actually the question that we want answered. So N is the value we want to calculate. Why didn't they give me P? Well, you'll see now that if I divide both sides with a P, P doesn't matter. Okay, 0 divided by P still remains 0. So that we now have 0 is equal to 1 minus 20 over 100 N. So we see we need to subtract this positive 1 on both sides so that I get negative 1 is equal to negative 20 over 100 N. Now I divide both sides with a negative 20 over 100 negative 20 over 100 okay and that gives me if you calculate it you'll find exactly five after five years I will have no value left and it actually makes sense because five times 20 is a hundred so after five years I have deducted a hundred percent of the value next question Jacques bought a, a thirteen hundred Ford Bantam Bucky for 119,000 and after two years he is selling it for 83,000. What was the average depreciation rate on the reducing balance method? Okay so let's see we have the reducing balance method and we're working out depreciation so we have our formula that my future value is my present value depreciation is 1 minus i to the power of n Okay, do I have my future value? I indeed have my future value, that's 83,000. Do I have my present value? Okay. My past value was 119,000. Okay, so it obviously helps if we do draw um, a timeline, especially when we're working with depreciation, and we know that 119,000 was my past value, and my future value is 83,000. Okay, the value it is now. You'll see on this timeline P always comes before F okay, on the timeline because this is past and that is future. My interest or actually depreciation rate is unknown at this point and my time period is 2. So substituting in there I get my future value is a hundred sorry uh, 83 83,000 my present value is a hundred and nineteen thousand or actually my past value one minus I is the one I'm trying to work out and N is the number of years it was depreciated over that's two years 
So here we go, we solve by dividing by 119,000 on both sides. Here we go, dividing by 119,000 on both sides, so that I'm left with 1 minus i squared. And on this side, I'm not even going to calculate it yet. I'm going to calculate everything in the end. Okay. And then I see, okay, to get rid of that square, I'm going to take the square root on both sides. Okay. Now, usually, when we take the square root, we must put a plus minus. Okay. But obviously, in this case, we aren't working with negative values. Okay. We already have our negative interest uh, or depreciation in there. So it's not necessary to take a plus minus. Okay. But we did get rid of the square root. So that all I have now is 1 minus i is equal to the square root of 83. Those zeros will just cancel. Okay, technically not really the zeros cancelling, but you know what I mean. So I'm going to add, or sorry, I'm going to subtract a 1 on both sides. Subtract a 1 on both sides. So I'm left with negative i is equal to the square root of 83 over 119 minus 1. Okay, so what this is telling me is then when I take this value and I subtract a 1, I get a negative answer, which means if I take 1 minus that value, in other words, I just swap these two terms around, I will get a positive answer. Okay, that's like saying 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 1. That means that 3 minus 2 is equal to positive 1. Okay, so that's just what I'm doing to get a positive in front of that i. There's different ways you can do it. I'm going to do that way, showing you something interesting. Okay, and there we go. What is the value of i? Let's go work out. We have 1 minus, and then I have inside my square root, I've got 83 over 119. I put that in brackets because I want to take the square root of that. Okay, so 1 minus the square root of 83 over 119, and that gives me an answer of 0, 0,164. 0, 0,164485. 4, blah 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 in the next one I'm going to multiply with a hundred and round to two decimal places so multiply with a hundred gives me sixteen comma forty eight percent that is my depreciation rate